Okay, does anybody have any issues with the minutes? Okay, so we um, uh, vote Make to approve. Okay, second. Second. And is there anybody opposed to accepting the minutes? All right, so then we move on to financial report, James. Okay, Cindy, are you on the air? Can we, you hear me? Cindy? Yes. Okay. Did you all get the spreadsheets that I sent yesterday? Yes. Yep. Okay. So we're in the last two months of the fiscal year. And this is, this is a time we really have to manage our resources. So I want to direct you to the lower right-hand corner of that spreadsheet. Um, where it says 13,567.40. Everybody see that? Yes. Okay, that's what we have left as of May 1st. So we've got probably at least three more warrants are going to be drawn against this. All right. So forget the individual allotments for the categories. They really don't make any difference at this late stage in the game. We just need to manage to that 13,567. Uh, Cindy, um, as, you draw, as you draw warrants going forward, you can use this spreadsheet and just put in the May and June columns the amount of the warrant, and it'll automatically <coughs> drop itself in the lower right-hand corner, so you'll know exactly where you are. Okay. You understand that? Yes. Okay, I'm going to send you a new spreadsheet tomorrow. Gotta, okay. I got to put the formulas in for, for May and June. Okay. Write a warrant, put it in the column, it'll populate down there. Now, as when you get into, into the last month and you get close, you're within a couple of hundred bucks, you need to call Bob to get his permission to go into the state aid funds to pay your bills if you need to. Okay. Don't don't pull the trigger before you have to. So Bob can authorize you, and you just write a warrant for whatever it is, Comcast salaries, whatever, and you'll use the state aid funds to pay for it. You understand? But I didn't think I needed trustee approval to use state aid funds. I thought that was to my discretion. No, it is not at your discretion. Those are controlled by the trustees. We went over this a couple of years ago. So Not you, even state aid. Yes, it's in the minutes. You just need it's good. It's good response, response reporting. So you just need to call Bob and tell him it's not that big a deal. Okay. You understand? Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, at the bottom of the page, um, there the lift monies. Margo billed us uh, $3,040. So we have balance remaining of 21,565 for the conclusion of her architectural studies. And we're hoping we're not gonna need all of that because I'd like to use that for the, the project itself. Yep. We still are holding back the thousand dollars for the sign. You can see that at the bottom of the page. Okay. So, uh, the reason the monies are tight because we were level funded for the last two years. We haven't yeah. overspent really in any category. So we've done a good job managing the funds. It's just that it's at the end of the year. We need to be really careful. Any questions? Okay. On that? Yeah, Jim, I just, uh, last meeting, we approved uh, the uh, purchase of the $500 protection contract for the tree. Yep. Um, is that going to come in the next fiscal year? As soon as we're built for it, Bob, we'll, we'll, We'll handle that, okay? Okay, perfect. Yeah. The, um, the special revenue accounts have not changed in the last two months. So I just want to direct your attention to the bottom of the page. And it shows that the total amount that we have right now. And you could see in the, in the right hand, we have uh, we had $144,007.75 at the beginning of the fiscal year. We had income of 3702.82. That's all interest income. We spent 1447.41 and we now have a balance of 146.0350. That's our total endowment. Okay. If we needed money for any expendable item, if I direct your attention to the top of that page, there's in the right hand corner in bold print. $43,069.57 that we can use at our discretion. 
Okay. That's that's a nice healthy report and it certainly is. Yeah. 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 With the projection that you've got. Yep. Is it going to be a surplus or are we going to go? Uh... It's going to be right down the wire, Larry. Okay, very right, close. No surplus. It'd be right down the wire. It might be a slight deficit. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Okay. Okay. Cindy, are you good with this? Cindy? Sorry, I had to unmute. Yes. Okay. So that, that's the end of my report. Thank you. Is there any, are there any questions for Jim? Okay, then we move on to the director's report. You go eat your M&Ms, okay? Or play with your your new toy or something, okay? When mommy talks. Okay. All right. So I sent out my director's report. Um, the board of health did approve my soft reopening plan, and I've been getting patrons asking on a daily basis, "When are we going to be reopened?" Without needing an appointment, I know that dear. Okay, okay, I'll help you when I'm done. Okay, go eat your M and M's, please. Um, I know that several libraries. Hatfield is already open. Deerfield. It's a it's a scratch one. Okay, I'll help. We'll when I'll let me finish this. Okay, and then we'll talk. Um, Deerfield is planning on opening next week. So I guess I'm just wondering when can we start? Well, wouldn't we have to have some staff in place before that could happen? I am the staff in place. <laughs> but you have training to do as well and you can't be sorting books, training and keep an eye on patrons, although that can be part of the training. Do you feel that will work? I mean, it would be, I mean, I've kind of been bouncing back and forth about it because in a way it might just be easier to be open without having to check the email to see if someone's emailed us about wanting to schedule an appointment or answering the telephone for someone wanting to know whether or not they could come in for an appointment to just have the doors be open. But that's going to happen anyways. We still have to we'll have to respond to emails. Oh, I, 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 I know, I'm just, I don't know if it would make things easier or. Well, Cindy, what do you have permission to do from the Board of Health? I have permission to do the soft opening, which would be on Mondays, the 11 to one would be open. You just, the doors are open, the, um, it's right there. Eat your M&Ms, please. Like 11 to 1 would be opening, and then we would be closed to do the cleaning, and then the browsing by appointment could be take place during that time. And then again, from like 2 to 4 for people who maybe couldn't make it in in the morning. And then if we close, if we stop at 4, that gives us time to empty the book drop and to... Um, you know, do a little bit of cleaning and then Tuesdays and Wednesdays, same thing, have a few hours in the morning, be closed for some period of time to do some of the cleaning and to be able to allow the browsing by appointment. Um, and still, of course, curbside pickup, even after this is all done and over with, I'm still planning on er offering curbside pickup because it's just the convenience that our patrons are enjoying if they just want to get their holds. Yeah. Um, I know that there's staff training that needs to be done, but there are going to be times when we are the only staff person in the building. So what, what are you comfortable with? I'd like to try it. And if it becomes too overwhelming, shut it down and go back to what it was. That way I can at least say I tried it. I made it. Okay. I, I don't have any problem with uh, a soft opening. When would you, when would you do that? Um, well, I want to get it advertised. So not this coming Monday, but the Monday before Memorial Day. That way, okay. hopefully I'll have staff and that'll give us a week to get in and get settled and start to get trained and start to get um, the new staff trained and we can see how it goes. Okay. And if it totally blows up in my face, I'll shut it down. So Monday the 24th. Sounds about right. 
Yep. And then if it totally blows up in my face and I shut it down next month, I'll say it totally blew up in my face and I was wrong. Well, at some point, the um, Board of Health is going to let you open up 100%, I would think. Right, because if everything goes according to plan, of course, this is if everything goes according to plan, Governor Baker wants everything to be fully reopened by August 1st. Okay. So there have been a few changes in the guidelines, such as starting May 1st, we don't have to quarantine books anymore, which is just making my job so much easier now. Yep. Yep. Um, and we've been bumped up to 50% capacity, but given the size of the building, I think three, no more than four patrons at a time is the comfort level. Sure. Um, so cover that, cover that. <clears throat> um, I sent Mass Library System is offering a six month leadership development training series, basically a boot camp for directors. Um, so I signed up to attend all of the classes. The first class is tomorrow and I do have a substitute coming in to be at the desk so that I can take my class, but still be there in case something comes up and a patron needs me or our substitute would need help. Um, our circulation is pretty good compared to last year since we were closed. Um, curbside is still popular, but browsing is getting there. And then a few things came up after I sent everyone out my report. Um, the wall in the vestibule by the bulletin board is starting to crack and peel. I just noticed it Monday or Saturday when I went into work and I called Bob and Bob said, we have a meeting Tuesday night, put it on my list. So it's on my list. It's not a very big crack right now, but it's a sort of an oval shaped crack and it's right by the bulletin board in the vestibule. On the wall? On the wall. I don't know how long it's been there. I just noticed it Saturday. Well, that's where the construction is going to take place, so. No, it's not on that side. It's on the other side, the wall facing the office. Oh. It's on the left when you walk in the door? Yes. Okay. Ooh. Yes. And I just noticed it, so I have no idea how long it's been like that. Huh. Well, i never seen it there before. No. Well, uh, what should we do about that? I'll take a look at it. Yeah, take okay. a look. One time when I'm there, I would have Thanks, to check it out when you okay. just walk um, in. So we've had, um, we still have the two requests to use the gazebos. I got a frantic telephone call from the mother of the bride who wants to use the wedding, the gazebo for a wedding ceremony on Friday, August 13th from four to five. Um, because I guess they had emailed the library at Waitley.org email and Emma had responded saying we're not, um, weddings aren't happening at this time. And so the mom called me in a panic because I guess they've already got the invitations printed out, which I know has really nothing to do with us. Um, but, and I told them that we we're having a trustees meeting tonight and I would hope to have more of an answer for them after tonight. Some of the guidelines have changed. I don't know if everyone got, I sent out the attachment yesterday in case anyone wanted to review them. Pretty much the only thing that has changed is it can now be 50% capacity instead of 25% capacity, but all the other requirements are still in place. The six feet between people, you still have to wear a mask. You still have to do the contact tracing. I don't, I mean, I don't know. Cynthia? What, what is our capacity for outdoor events at the gazebo? Do we have- I have, have no idea. We yeah. don't have one. So we have to, in that case, um, it says venues for which no permitted occupancy limitation is on record may allow something, something. It got cut off of accessible space and never more than 500 persons. I think if you have that 10 feet apart for performers and six feet for 
individuals, groups, or family members, right. you're okay. We've got about 10,000 square feet out there. How much square foot, Jim? About 10,000. All right. So do we do, do I just, as director, do I just go ahead and approve them and just send them a copy of the guidelines saying pen, that you have that it's approved on the condition that you follow these guidelines. I mean, these are private events, but they're being held on a town owned space. So this is where I just, I don't know. How big is her wedding? Um, <clears throat> the one in August is saying 50 people. Mm. And the one for next month, it, sounds, it says no more than 50 people. So they're not planning large 300 person weddings. Where, where are all the chairs and stuff weddings come from? They, they're responsible for those? They're responsible. We don't, we don't loan out anything, just the use of the space. Okay. So they would have to be responsible for all of that. <clears throat> they also have to be made aware that there aren't any facilities. There's no rest room facilities or getting ready facilities. All right, I mean, I can call them tomorrow and just explain all of this to them and see if they're okay with it. And then if they are, I just approve them. And then set, when I send back their copy of the approval, include a copy of the COVID guidelines that need to be followed. Yeah, wait, yeah, if you're gonna scan and email that back, isn't there a thing that they sign? Yes, and I usually, and then down at the bottom, there's a spot for me to sign. And usually I mail back a copy to them and keep the original in a file that we have in the office. Well, as long as they have the guidelines and understand that these restrictions are in place, I mean, I guess. Okay. Especially for the August wedding, because if Governor Baker wants everything open by the 1st of August, and that wedding is happening at the end of August. I don't, I, I just don't see how that's going to be an issue. I, right. I okay. I'll go ahead and uh, call both of these people tomorrow and explain that it's sort of a conditional approval based upon the fact that there are COVID guidelines that need to be followed and I'll send them a copy of them. Uh, I and just, that the facilities will not be open. And there's no facility, no use of facilities. Right. I think that has to be in writing because I don't, they can't come screaming to us afterwards and saying, well, we thought we could go in and change in the library. We thought we could right. the bathroom because it's all, you know, as long as that's right. in writing, then I think we're covered. Okay. So I'm, I made a note for that and I covered the hole in the wall and covered the guidelines. Um, the only other update I have is the friends want to do their summer concert series. I've had a couple of conversations with a couple of the members of the friends group. One of them said she's willing to write up a plan to get approved by the board of health to see if they could do their summer concerts. So as soon as I know more, I will let you know on that. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, any, any questions? Go ahead, Cynthia. No, I see. I see it's coming up later in the agenda, so I'll wait. Oh, the library okay. associate. Should we just jump to that now? Sure, you can do okay. that. Okay. So I posted Emma's position. I received about a dozen applications. One as far away as Utah. Seriously. <laughs> Planning on commuting? I have no <laughs> idea. Um, some people have experience, some people don't. So of the about dozen applications that I received, I interviewed the three most qualified. Of the three most qualified, the one that I believe will fit the best is Rebecca Schmidt. She is a first year library student. Um, she's in her first year of her master's program at Simmons College. She has social media experience. One of the projects that she did for her class was to actually create a website. Um, she has a lot, we have a lot of similar train of thought of ideas of things we like to see and do. She's got a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. 
Her references loved her. I really like her. And I want to offer her the job. And I would like to offer her $17 an hour as an incentive to want to come and work for us. I was ready to have her, like, I was ready to hire her last week and have her, like, start yesterday. But the town administration said, stop. You can't do that. The trustees have to have final approval over who I hire and what the rate of pay would be set at. So that's why I'm here tonight saying that I really, Rebecca's who I want to hire and I would like to offer her $17 an hour to start. Okay, uh, discussion, questions? Are any one of us planning on meeting with this young lady before she's hired? Any of the trustees? It's the director's job it's, to hire yeah, the staff. I understand that, but she needs approval from the trustees and how can we approve it if we don't meet her? I, I mean, it sounds like Cindy feels 100% with her. I guess I'm not clear on this, this process because I understood that the director had complete authority to do it and then Brian and that's, is and, saying something differently. Right. And, so. And that's what I thought, too, because when I hired Emma, yes, she was already there, but she was the most qualified of all the applicants we had at the time. And all I said was, OK, I've hired Emma. This is what she's starting out at. And I don't know if it's because this year the town is being audited, that they're being extra thorough to make sure I's are dotted and T's are crossed, that even though it says that the director is responsible for hiring the staff, I thought all I had to do was say, this is who I want to hire, and the trustees would say yes or no. I'm, uh, I'm perfectly willing to back Cindy's choice um, because Cindy's the one that's got to work with her day to day. And she looked at 12 applicants. She selected three. She interviewed three. And I, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I'm pretty excited that we have the potential yeah. for someone who is working on getting a degree, a master's in library science. I think that is promising and something that's always a challenge for us, I would imagine, because we don't offer full-time work. Where, so, where, is this, where is this lady from? She's originally from the eastern part of the state, um, Chelmsford. Chelmsford. But now she has relocated and she lives in East Hampton with her partner. Okay, okay. And she's looking to establish roots in the community and become a part of the community. <clears throat> can we can we offer the 17 or do we have to go around the guidelines of the uh, Hello? Town? Well, Emma, Emma was budgeted when Emma left, she's making $18 and 13 cents an hour. So that's what we're budgeted for, for the rest of this fiscal year. That's what we're budgeted at for next fiscal year, because when the budget was submitted, Emma was still working for us. So it is, we are able to offer that. I'm in favor of it. I'm in favor of Call her back. Ditto. She will call her back. Do uh, do let's make a formal motion and a second. Do the roll call so that Ooh. Brian has call everything that he wants Ooh. from. Are you okay? Someone want to make the motion to hire. We make a motion okay. to have Cindy move forward with offering this young lady the job. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Do you want to attach also to that that we hire her at seventeen dollars an hour, which really is a pittance, folks? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Um, I know it is, but I want, I want. No, like, it's a pittance, meaning it's not a lot for somebody no. who's got really good qualifications. I know, but I also wanted it to be an incentive for her to yes. come aboard. Got Perfect. So we've got a motion and we, do we have a, did we have a second? I forgot. Larry. Okay. Yeah. So now, um, if, is there any further discussion? Okay. Um, then we'll proceed to a roll call vote. Jim? Aye. Larry? Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Sheila? Yes. And I vote yes, even though my name is not Amy Schrader. Okay, <laughs> so um, you have uh, you have our permission. Um, it's in the minutes, which 
I, I, what else do we have to do to, to um, please Brian, Cindy? Do I, I have, call I have absolutely no idea. I will email him tomorrow and let him know that the trustees voted unanimously to hire Rebecca at $17 an hour. Is there anything else you need? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Super. All right. Um, anything else on your report, Cindy? We're all good? I believe we're all good. Okay. Jim, any want to do any update on the... We, had, we got a nice article in the Greenfield Recorder today that the um, Community Preservation Committee has authorized uh, up to $75,000 for our project, which we expected, but it's you never know until it's there. Right. So it has to go to town meeting and everybody should attend town meeting um, to put this over the finish line. I will be contacting Margo in the next week or so and let her know that we're coming up on the, on the due date so that she's all ready to go. Okay. At that time. Okay. All right. Any questions? I, yep. I do. Um, when we started this and in, in the way that it was submitted, it said that we were not going to affect the stacks. So how do we get over that bump? That is still an issue, Sheila. Um, there's a couple of solutions, um, but that, that's a work in progress. I, I, I can't answer your question right now, but it's a work in progress and we have to work through it. There'll be a lot of other issues on this project as we go forward. Mm -hmm. So I'll just keep you guys informed and do the best we can. Will it, do you think that, I mean, if we're level funded now and then we have to um, not have as many, as much on our collection development, will the town possibly then look at that and say, well, now you only have this much, is, no, there, is there? Okay, we're not have any plans to, to decrease the size of the collection. The collection will remain and perhaps grow. Okay, that's I not so. part of, that's not an option. We are going to maintain the the collection level as we have right now. I can't tell you how, but we're that's. What we're <laughs> I know, I know. It's, there it's are, a work there in are progress. Some good solutions to this problem, and I just need to work it through with the architect and um, and we get a better view of it. Okay. So. Um, just to remind people, town meeting is the 15th of June, so it'll be a Tuesday night at 7 p.m. the week after our next meeting is when it's scheduled for based on unless there has to be a change for weather. It's outside at the elementary school, correct? Yes. Correct. June 15th, 7 p.m. at the elementary school. Thank you. Okay, so we move on to the library procedures group uh, has not met um, since the last meeting. Um, I'm overwhelmed with the number of things I have to do, including the zoning board, which is driving me crazy, but we're sure gonna have a lot of marijuana in Waitley. Yeah, sounds like. Um, yeah, um, so do you, Cynthia or, Cindy, do you have anything you want to add to that? I mean, we're working on it. We're, we're, we're getting, I mean, it's a work in progress still. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm flexible to meet whenever people are ready. Well, I'm semi-flexible when people are able and have the bandwidth. Okay. Okay. Cindy, you got anything you want to add? I Whatever works for you and Cynthia, I will make it work for me. Okay. All right. Um, holiday tree replacement, um, Sheila, did you well, guys talk about that? Actually, that came up at the last friends meeting um, and Katie wasn't able to attend, but I think to date um, that contract has been signed. I assume it's back with Bartlett tree or whatever. Um, so that, you know, that will move forward. Um, that's all, that's all I've got to report on that. 
I okay. did. Got the contract oh, here. Okay, good. And the and the tree surface is working with Keith Bardwell in putting this. Perfect. Together. They're both I on did, the I dig did. tape and everything else. I did notice today when I was walking back into the library from putting out the opening flag that there is a stick in the ground that looks to be about roughly the spot where the new tree is supposed to be planted. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, all right. So do you have anything else you want to add about the latest friends meeting? No, just... Um, there it wasn't you know it, there wasn't a huge attendance and it wasn't a long meeting but it uh it moved along we followed the agenda um moved the agenda right along um there were a couple of requests which i believe mary ellen sent around for the other friends group to okay i think i saw that come around in my email and they also created um an entire list of the, the contact, not only emails, but numbers to reach people. Um, so that Cynthia, Megan, and I will be included in the, the friends group emails and, you know, events and updates and what have you. So it was, uh, it was, like I said, kind of a quiet meeting with not a lot on the agenda. Uh, one more time, it came up about the events and, I've since asked Cindy to um, send around the agenda, the restrictions and what, what has to be done. And I guess, you know, they'll decide from there at the following meeting. Okay. So. Okay. Cindy, did you want to add anything from your perspective of that meeting? No, I think it went really well, despite the fact that we had a few technical glitches to start with. Yeah. Um, but we did move right along. I got, uh, Mary Ellen did send out all of the uh, information today. And I guess they're, I will make sure they get the copy of the guidelines and they're willing to write up their own proposal to submit to the Board of Health to get it approved so they can have concerts this summer. Well, I think moving toward normalcy is not a bad thing. No, but... It's also the amount of work involved. It really does need to be a team effort this year. Right. I, I think that you're, you, you've got a different group of friends that will um, respond differently than in the past. So let's hope for the best. Okay. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Okay. Um, you already did your update on the status of the soft opening, which is going to occur on 524. Is there any other old business? I got something, Bob. Yep. Um, I've just want to ask Cindy. Last month, she uh, made a point of um, there was a problem with electrical wiring or something. Has that been addressed? This, the emergency mm -hmm. lighting. I do not know. I need to follow up with Nate because he sent an email saying he'd stop by the library, but I haven't seen him yet. But okay, that so doesn't just, mean he didn't stop by when I wasn't there. Okay, just put that back on the list to make that correction. And I'm going to say that I dropped the ball on coming up with a description of a potential student representative on the board of trustees so that we can then put it forth. So I will get that out before the next yeah. meeting and people can take a look at it. In all, in all likelihood, um, we're gonna have to wait till the fall because um, school just reopened 100% and it's a madhouse. I mean, it's not a madhouse, but it's the first time that 600 people have been together in one place and they're, they're working on which direction to walk in the hallways and, and you know, letting classes out on a staggered basis. Oh. Nobody, nobody wants to talk about something else right now. And I think teachers are so burnt out by what they had to go through um, mm -hmm. to get to this point that I think um, I'll talk with Zoe in the summer and we'll have, we'll, we'll be able to kick it into gear in the fall. Yeah, I'm not trying to push it forward. I'm just saying that I, it had been brought up. I said I would deal with it. I didn't, yep. I'm sorry, I will. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. And we already did the hiring of the new associate. Is there any other new business? Well, my friends, I think oh we've reached gosh. the end of the agenda. Okay, so uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay, Not is there anybody opposed cow. to adjourning? All right, I will see you all. I think I guess the seventh ish of June, something like uh, that. Oh, uh, and I'll keep doing the, the Zoom meetings until they tell us we could meet outside. Okay. Um, all right. So I, I, th that way, at least we have a you know the Zoom address because we we have to share. There's two accounts and we have to share them. And it's meeting wild. Will be the eighth, Bob. Let's see. It would be the eighth. Okay. June yeah. 8th. Okay. Um. Okay, I, I won't be there. Oh, okay. Because you won't June, be. Yeah, no, June eighth. I have a I have a track meet in Munson, uh, and there's no way I will be back by six o'clock. So um, do we do we switch to another night, or do we have someone else take the lead for the night? Well, let's. Can we? How about Wednesday the ninth? Is that a zoning board evening? Uh, anything's possible. Um, I know. Because. Oh, Oh, yeah, June 9th, June 9th would be would work better for me. Okay. Unless, of course, well, if it rains on June 8th, then I'll um I'll give Sheila the the log on stuff and at least it'll be it'll be arranged. Is Wednesday the 9th okay with everybody? Fine with me. Thank you. Yep. I I appreciate it. Okay, okay. so I will look to do Wednesday the 9th. Okay.